Uh, starting again. Hi, everybody. Welcome to Grayscale Gorilla. Uh, Ask GSG, actually. Uh, Nick hey, is in buddy. town, so we're answering questions. So Shraldam asked a question about Fabio. Oh, you got to say that, though. Uh, my guess is Fab Fabio Angarato design. Uh, Anyway, the designs are amazing. You should totally check out this website. And he's got pretty much every image is gorgeous and something we could try and tackle to make. But the, and I think they're real. Yeah. This is all physically built, which we always like that stuff even more because yep. working from real life is so much more fun. But the specific image we were asked, asked about was actually one of the more simple looking things. But then you can really get into the challenging details is this number two. And that looks amazing. So we're going to try and tackle this and see if we can uh, recreate this lighting. Yeah. So we're going to... Uh try to get the colors on the side so the the things on my book are we got to get the colors obviously we got to get the gradient on the sides capped on but then let's look at the lighting because as always if you're going to try to recreate something or try to get a certain mood or a look the lighting and the textures are the main important piece like this could be any shape or number or word yeah that could be any letter but it but the actual mood of it is about the lighting. Is it bright? Is it dark? Is it... Where's the camera? Where's the camera? Like, all those pieces. So, if we look at this, it's kind of a normal shot. It's angled from the side. No big, like, wide-angle lens or anything. we got some gradients. But then look at the shadows. This is really specific to this one because the shadows are actually really detailed. It's not a soft shadow on this. So, we can actually see that there's two shadows or two main light sources giving it its... Um, oh, yeah. I, I can't point at the monitor, can I? Nope. So... Two main light sources giving it shadow. So one is coming from over here across the top and making this kind of shadow. And it's also in the front, right? Because you could tell because this is getting picked up here. There's a light in front of it and to the right here giving that shadow and this shadow, that one. Then there's one up and to the left giving this and this and this, right? So and the other thing I want you to pay attention to is that these are hard light sources. These are not big soft boxes. These are, imagine, little lights in the ceiling. In fact, if we go back um, to the page. Just hit close at the bottom. Oh, close. I see. It's just part of the thing. I think, well, look at that. There it is. Okay. So we have this wood that has one little beam of light going through it. And that is our light source, right? Check it out. So we're cheating here because we get to see it, but we essentially are doing the same thing. There's a small light source here and a small light source here. What's important to look at is it's small in one direction, but not the other, right? It's and that's where you get that really nice fade is because it's a long, sharp light. Yep. Interesting. Yep. So I wouldn't have thought of that. Yeah. Either. And, and we would have started with spotlights and, and it would have not looked correct we wouldn't get that follow -up. and so we can actually can use soft boxes but we could use them against um the the ceiling here and we also have a sense of the scale too so we're getting a lot of detail by looking at the context of this from the real world so we're getting a general size of these things and we're getting also the distance of how far all this stuff is out so the building of this of course is going to be relatively fast right we can uh get our um we can get our uh, Mo text. We could drop a, a, let's do a two in it for now so we can make sure our shadows are looking correct. And let's also look at the um, typeface and stuff. I think it's just yeah. like a big chunky Helvetica kind of thing. Why, um, why don't you make the letter? Let me put the gradient on there and I think that will be the only thing I do in this whole tutorial. Okay. <laughs> we, we did kind of pick, you know, I'm in town, you know? Oh we're, yeah, we're no, picking. it's gotta be Nick centric. So uh, that is pretty close. It's a Helvetica kind of bold. <laughs> Regardless, it's and a sexy looking That's too. gonna be a kind of a big, nice shape. Anytime you're looking at um, things that are in a airport or office building, always start with Helvetica bold. Like it's just a good start. Like it, nine times out of 10, it just is, okay? Um, so here's our two. And I want to set up a little bit of context. I want to take a plane and do a Z kind of in here. Move this back and scale it up. Sweet. And that'll be our big wall to where we have that. Now, the other thing to remember is there's a lot of light bouncing around this room, right? Now, if this is only lit by here, we're going to have a lot of bounces, and a, lot of uh, a lot of reflectance. For example bouncing off the floor and into mm, this. That's why that's gonna be so yellow. Right, so look at that yellow shadow 
in the three. And that's going to give us a hint. If we only had the three, we would say, where's that yellow coming from? With the two, we actually have a, a, a kind of a, a red shadow. So that makes me think maybe the floor is the a different color. The floor might color. be red. It could also mean that the underside of this is red, and that's picking up a lot of That's what I originally thought, but the blue is not illuminating as blue as the red is illuminating. So that's making me think the floor in that room yep. is indeed red. Well, remember, the blue won't put as much detail on the wall as color-wise because it's not so much bright. shadow. So it's really the shadows where you start to see more bouncing of colors because that's where the absence of color on the, on the key light is where the secondary colors will start to show up. So... Well, uh, here's a question, mm -hmm. especially if you're going to be throwing GI into the scene. Do you want me to whip up a super generic version of that room? So Red floor. There you go. <laughs> what, look, look what we have here. Red floor. Well, here's the thing. I don't think we need, we don't need it. all the detail in the room. I think if we put a red floor, and so I'll let you do this, Chris. We'll get a red floor. And we'll get white walls, and we'll get a. We'll, we, I don't think we need to worry about the ceiling because it's dark enough, and there's really no walls on the other side. But I think we might benefit by having a wall on the opposite side. So sure. I'll let you build just a little tunnel, and let's look at a couple other examples as we do this too. We can start to see the context of some of this stuff. So we really are getting a lot of of bonus context here by looking at all their images. Yeah. But, uh, we, we almost never have this context, and we'd just be going off these guesses. Right, like, it's just the 3 Like I would have assumed that the red underneath was just a GI bounce off of the letter itself. But no, it's the floor. And we were able to, have, give it more context, guess that that floor would indeed be red. Right. Well, okay, so I'll let, I'll let you do that. Why don't you build um, the, the the floor, and uh, you don't, don't worry about the ceiling because we'll have to reposition those lights a bunch, and I don't want the ceiling in the way. Sure. So just get um, get our wall and our floor and maybe the uh, uh, one across the hall, like the one opposite. Sure. If you want to build all that up. And then maybe put the gradient on there, and we can start to light and texture this thing. Oh, uh, yeah. I guess the, way. The, the simplest way is just going to be let's just make a cube. So Boom. I'm just going to make a cube, make it editable. Uh, I'll even just take this guy and immediately put it at zero to be our floor. We move the two up, perhaps, and pull our ceiling up. And now we can just be very specific with our placement of all these different uh, elements. I'll pull this a decent way across. Now we can grab the two sides. T for scale. Scale is just on X. Make it nice and big. Um, now the ceiling could be getting in the way, so we can probably just go ahead and delete that. We'll give, add a new plane in there if we need to. So we actually get we can even get those outer walls if we want them and whatnot, but we just kind of get them for free. Uh, and then we can just pull our two up a little bit. I'm going to make sure we are, are probably intersecting pretty well, but I'm going to grab this and pull it until we are just, just barely, touching. barely passing through. Like we could be very specific, but like it, intersecting a little bit is not going to have any effect one way or the other. One last thing, I don't know if it'll affect GI at all, but you'll see that we actually have a blue normal here, meaning we're seeing the inside of a polygon. So I'm actually going to hit uh, Command A and select all, and then hit U R, which is a shortcut U, and you see all the different commands for polygons, and then hit R, which inverts the normals, and you see they all turn orange on the inside, which we pretty much just turned box inside out as far as Cinema 4D is concerned. Um, honestly, that should probably give us most of the basics. Maybe the ceiling's pretty tall in there, so maybe we can grab these Yeah, you might want to move that two down, too, because if we're, gonna, um, if we're gonna get the bounce off the floor, sure. we're gonna have to have that Be there. pretty close, yeah. yeah. So that's that's totally free for you to just move around however you want. Okay, cool. Uh, something I'll also do, just so you have easier time moving around in the scene while you're doing your lighting and whatnot, is going to be, uh, I'll throw on a Cinema 4D display tag and tell this one that it has to be based on lines. Ooh. So it's always going to be there, and it will still render and reflect. And if I hit render right now, it will block our view. But Got while it. we're working, you can see right through it. Cool. Uh, so now I'll just jump on over to the two, and we're going to texture it real quick. And I'm not even going to choose the gradient. I'm just going to apply it. So I want to set up a super simple material setup here and keep everything parametric uh, and easy for Nick to make all the changes he needs. So I'm going to just make a gradient. Uh, I'm actually immediately going to change this gradient to be a linear knot or linear. So now it's just really nice, clean, linear. It doesn't try and compensate for anything. Um, and I can just leave that black and white like that. And I'm going to apply it directly to our Mo text. I need to take this and immediately turn it to be flat. And I'm going to now go to our texture mode and turn on the axis. I always forget the shortcut, but it's L. So you can turn the axis on and off with L, which is really useful. Uh, and I'm just going to center this. And honestly, uh, if we just go to this view, I can just very easily and cleanly scale this down to be as tight as I can. We don't have to get super duper specific, but that should, that should actually pinch it pretty well. And we could rotate it, um, but I want to not rotate it. And we'll just go in here and tell this to be a V. 
gradient. So you'll see that's going to be passing up and down. Now, if we look at our reference, you'll see that. Sorry, I moved it. It's fine. We'll jump on over to that one. Um, uh, you'll see that the front, of course, is a nice bright white color. So we need to compensate for that because right now this is applying on the sides and the front. Um, so I'm going to make another material. I guess we can just make that plain old white. I'm going to take that. I'm going to throw it on the Motext on top of the other one, and that completely overrides it. But Motext and uh, extruded normal extruded text, we can just type in C1, and that will be the first cap, the front cap. If we did C2, it would cover the back, but we're not going to see it, so I don't care. Um, so there's your there's your uh, your gradient, and then there's the uh, front with extra O's because the mic's block blocking my uh, keyboard. And uh, why not, just for the sake of it, why don't we... Ooh, and another thing we can do. So we need to texture the floor mm. one color. Yep. So I'm going to... Uh, the easiest way to do this, actually, is we could set a selection tag. So I'm going to grab this, and we can make a selection tag. But even quicker is I can... Um, well, here's... I'm going to take one material and throw on here. That's going to be the uh, the walls. And then we'll make another material, and I'm just going to arbitrarily set that to red. You'll probably be changing it. But I can just select that one polygon, drag the material on, drop it directly on. That doesn't seem to be working. It could be, is my display tag making that be the case? That would be interesting if it is. I'm going to drag that off, drag that on. Wow, I did not know that. The display tag is making it so that it didn't interact in the same way I was expecting it to. Look at that. I dragged the tag off, and now as I drag it over, you'll see we get this nice little plus. When I apply it, it's going to be the second material, which means it's on top, but it automatically limited to my current selection. Mm -hmm. So nice. uh, super easy to do that. Just rename this wall so we're nice and organized. Drop this tag back over here so it will render correctly, but there you go. That's uh, ready for you to take over. Actually, let's save it because we always forget to do that. Yay. Lie. Nope. Uh, 2015. No, wait. Where do we do? Oh, season two. There we go. Uh, I think we're actually on like... Whoa. Episode, episode 13 Chris. I, I, actually i think it's more like 16 because the last couple happened on my computer uh oh, i'm gonna yeah. i'm gonna guess it's 15 all right. all right um i don't even know what to call this um uh two on the wall yeah <laughs> two, two on the wall oh, I capital like it. two is uh, oh, dang symboling it. you two on the wall all right ready to rock ready to go all right thanks buddy all right so i am going to um throw some lights in here and we're gonna use uh, some soft boxes like we talked about earlier. We're gonna use Lightkit Pro here. We're gonna use an overhead soft box since we kind of want it perfectly straight. And I think the scale of it is gonna matter quite a lot. How far away from the object oh, the axis is on. we're K. gonna be, right? Or L. So, so we can move this over and kind of try to tie it up into the wall. So if we're looking at the side here, we want this to be almost touching. No touching, but almost touching. And then we want to build that really thin little light. And the way we do that is by reducing the width way down. So we have this really thin light that's going to cast kind of a soft shadow in one direction and a hard shadow in another, right? So it's not purely um, just on its own. But then I'm also going to say it's roughly in the same area as the other one. So I'm gonna actually duplicate that light and bring it over. And now we have matching lights here. Anytime you're working with reflectance and uh, any illuminant, uh, illuminant materials, you wanna make sure GI area light is on. So that's just something we just gotta do before we get going. But now it's about the scale and the positioning of the light and how the light bounces around the scene. So if we do a render, we're probably on the outside of the box here. So let's make sure our camera is inside the box. So let's grab a camera. Let's also kind of get our our uh, our zoom set up and kind of get it on the wall and and kind of get our scene relative to where we want this to be and start looking at what we have as far as shadows. Look at that! Look the at ladders that. are almost spot on already. Almost perfect. So what we have now is the uh, the shadows. So let's look at the reference I'm, here. I'm shocked. It's the, oh, close those shadows are, are Isn't that cool? already. Like, that, that's what the analysis does for you. Right, like looking at all those lights and how they're designed and where they are, like we get to get pretty close. So I would say our angles, they might be a little bit further off on this side, like a little further over on the, the right one. But we really have our angles set up pretty good. Um, so from here, what we got to start to worry about is the GI or the reflectance and how the light bounces around the room and how we start to get more of the brightness of this scene. And 
you know, I tell you, I think we could get pretty close without relying on global illumination. But because that's why this is looking the way it does, mm -hmm. I think we should set it up for global illumination anyway, it's just so we could do that. It's such a simple scene as well. It's it's not going to kill us on the render times or anything. It's like there's very few crazy. polygons here. Yeah. So let's um, let's go. Uh, let, uh, the red's fine. Uh, but let's also pick some colors for that gradient. So let's let's grab the gradient, which uh, you set up here for me real nice. I'm just going to pick some some different colors here. I'm going to go a little bit more saturated just so we could kind of see them. And I think they had like a blue to purple or something, and we could kind of get close to that. That was even more red, I think. Uh, that looks a little better. Okay, so we have the color there. Then we have the red on the ground. Okay, and then we have our light soft boxes. We have our camera. So now let's um, look into some render settings. So uh, I'm going to use, um, let's see, we probably just need light kit render settings. So I'm going to use top coat uh, presets and render settings. These are going to allow us to kind of start with um, some render settings I've been using a lot, which allow us to go kind of start at draft mode really low and then bump up as we need it. So I'm just going to set draft mode. I'm going to set an interactive render region here, and I'm going to turn on physical, which we have. And you can see draft modes really give us pretty sh pretty crappy shadows, but it renders very, very quickly. Okay, so now what we have to deal with is how do we start to get these colors and textures to bounce? Well, we can um, – traditionally, I've used um, reflectance to get that GI. And I think this may be a good case in using the more traditional GI uh, settings. So we could, we could turn on global illumination. We could actually just try one of those instead. So let's go to ambient occlusion. Nope, I'm sorry. Let's go to GI draft. And so that's going to allow the light to bounce around quite a bit more. And now look what we're seeing here. We're seeing some color. Already. Look at all the red in there because of the floor. Yep. So it's picking up uh, red from the floor and throwing it back up into our object. So now all of our shadows become slightly more red because of this floor everywhere, right? And, and watch the shadow as we go down, it's going to be even more. Look at that red, red, red shadow down there, right? So how can we start to balance this? Well, we have our white wall, right? We have all that stuff going on. We're also using default global illumination, which is pretty good. They have this preset called um, uh, preview high diffuse depth. We're just going to try this one too and see what this looks like. It's going to do a little calculation. And then it's going to bounce the light around even more in our scene. And as you can see, it renders pretty quickly. That's pretty quick. And we get some nice light bouncing around our scene here. So right now, I think we're close. We just need to balance all these colors. So we, it's a little tough with this red because it's so saturated that we may want to pull this down so that we don't have it as, um, uh, as much in our scene. We can also go to our illumination and say how much do you want uh, this red to illuminate with uh, uh, GI? So you could see generate GI, uh, yes, uh, receive GI also, right? And so I guess I was realizing maybe we could have a bounced GI, but that's not the case here. How much does it bounce, generate GI? That might be it. So I'm just going to go 500 and see if this gets this, extra red. Yeah, this should be – well, it's going to be super bright because there's also saturation, which is a little different. But, yeah, I mean, yeah there will be a lot more of mm -hmm. that going on. In so, there. yeah, so that added a lot more red to the scene. So this could help us balance a little bit. We also have, um, for example, the difference between the walls and the front. So this uh, tended – to me, I think has a little bit more of an off-white color to it. Yeah, I was gonna say a little warmth in the walls. Yep, and I'm actually just gonna put put these two together because the um the front of the cap and the wall seems to have the same kind of paint color on it. So we could push those together, and that darkened it just I, 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 a little bit. Hit undo real quick because I you, you, you just flew, no no you, you just flew through it. Uh, you taught me this. I didn't know it. Uh, it was a couple weeks ago. Well, when you were in last, how you combine different materials, and I didn't know you could do it. Oh, so if you ever want to combine two materials and keep them uh, on the same objects as they are, like Chris set up this nice cap thing for the Motex where it's only on the cap and everything. But if you just want to combine two materials, like you have two chrome materials that you just find yourself always matching, which I always end up like, why are there two chrome materials here? I'm not sure. Like the chrome on the lamp should be the same as the one on the bed. So let's combine them. So what you do is you grab one of your textures 
and you drag it. You pick it up and you drag it. Now by default, you could just move it around your texture scene here. But if you hold Option down, did I mess it up? I, I'm doing it by hand. You know how you forget your keyboard yeah, when, you say it out when, loud. You, when you say it out loud? So you're going to grab it, and then you're going to hold down Command, and it's going to turn into a little plus symbol. And if you see that, it's a plus. And then you let go, and it's going to duplicate it because I did the wrong one. So what you need to do <laughs> is hold down Option. So it's not the plus. It's the square, and that's going to combine the two of them. I should have stuck with my gut on where my hand was. So it looks like we have two different things. One is command drag, which by the way, I saw as a new thing yesterday while we're talking about new new tips here. If you pick a mo text and you hold down command and drag, you're gonna make two of them. Yep. I didn't know that Duplicates. existed. Yep. Um so same here with your textures, but also option, combine textures. Boom. And now they're both the same. So uh So you for... obliterate front and everything that was front is now also walls. Exactly. Exactly. So I'm going to um, brighten this up. I'm also going to take our overhead soft boxes and I'm going to make them both um, inverse square regular. Okay, not clamped. Now, clamped is nice to have on it for a lot of reasons, but when you're trying to recreate lighting in a more realistic way, uh, just inverse square on its own tends to be. Um, a little bit more natural as far as light fall off and all those kind of things. Well, isn't the main thing is that right where that's hitting the surface, like if you, if you looked up in the room, maybe blowing out really close to the surface, but the the end result fall off looks really good. Right. So we can actually move out here and see what we're talking about. Move up. You're so, still seeing through the still wall. behind it? There we go. So you can see yeah. right next, just like Chris said, right next to the walls, we're going to get a lot, a ton of light. Um, and actually the global illumination is going to help with this kind of balance it out a little bit you can see it's really cleaning up. So still that red floor is just like so um, powerful, which which I think we could just kind of tone back here, right? Mm -hmm. Like, I mean, it's, it's really strong. I don't think we need it that much. I do think we need more overhead softbox. As you uh, change your shadow types and as you change your fall off and all that kind of stuff, remember, to go look at all the other stuff, um, including your light source, to see if it's need, could be brighter, because that's going to help with the bouncing. It's going to help with all this stuff. So this is okay. It's a little flat, still a little flat for my taste. So what I would do is add some ambient occlusion as well to this. So let's go to settings. Let's go to ambient occlusion. Let's check our settings. It's 600 centimeters, which to me is might be too big. Eh, let's just see what that looks like with 600 centimeters. Let this render. And now, that's going to be what's what's going to be interesting here is like mm. okay, that's going to add some nice shadow inside of it, but that top, especially in a reference in the top, it's going to add shadow in the top where it wouldn't necessarily exist. That's true. So what we could do is instead of ambient occlusion, uh, we could look into shadow maps for our overhead soft boxes and try to fix it that way, and actually uh, com like kind of mess with our distance as well. Not our distance. Sorry about that. Let's change that back. Let's go back up to our top camera here and make sure everything's all good. So instead of our distance, what I'm gonna do is just look at our light fall off. Okay, and so what that's gonna do is make it a little bit darker before it hits the floor. And that might give us a little bit more shadow detail. It may, mean, may need that we turn it up a little bit more. That's okay. But we're essentially wanting more difference between the top and the bottom, which, yeah, that's not my favorite thing I did. Okay, so we're, we're essentially at the point where it starts to look good, but then where do you get all this crispness and all this all this like shadow detail, right? Because look at all this nice gradient kind of comes in here. This is nice and shadowed, really bright. So we could what we could have here is a case of that the lights are too big. Okay, so let's uh, let's not spend too much time on this, but let's keep our camera there. Let's zoom out and look at our hallway. And look at our reference, okay? So we get we get to cheat a little bit, which is nice. I do, I do dig that we have these references. Okay, so look at the scale of the hallway. The three is like one, two, you can fit like three threes on the wall, right? Maybe three, four. And half a three below it. Yep. So let's look at the scale of what we have here. Maybe a little small, right? So just by scaling that up, you're going to have more of a difference between the top of this color and the bottom of this color right? You want that fall off to be obvious, okay? In fact, our global illumination is really uh, bouncing that light around quite a bit, so we could even tone that down. So I know I haven't talked about this in a few years, but global illumination has light mapping, and light mapping 
has depth bounces that are basically free to calculate. They really don't take too much longer, but 16 is pretty high. Um, so I'm just going to knock this back to five and see what that does, because that's going to allow us to um, see more shadow detail, and it's going to do less of that like fill in light everywhere kind of thing. So let's see what we got now. Now, it may also mean that our extrusion is it not as thick as it should. Yeah, maybe it's just not that deep. But now I'm already getting more detail on the wall. I'm getting more detail from our colors. There's nicer fall off. Better fall off, and it's just a better feeling. Um, let's check and make sure that ambient occlusion is off. So that's just render details. Um, we can go back to our settings really quick. Let's do a square output for this just so we can um, kind of... Uh, frame it up a little bit nicer here. We got a two. We could try different numbers too. We're gonna throw look, a G in there. Gonna look down on it a little bit. You know, I wish I wish I would have thought about what uh, what a G looks like. It's like my least favorite letter, but I started a website with it. So I gotta find like <laughs> like a pre, like I just stick with numbers because G's are so such a weird little letter. It's like what are you trying to be? Are you trying to be a G? Are you trying to be a C with a with, with a thing on it? All right, let's let's get close here. We got our blue. Actually, I like this blue to red i also think that the lights are offset a little like it's not perfectly centered that's true that's true blue like a darker red it could be a better look for this thing and like oh look at that pretty like pale blue yeah those teals yeah that's really pretty Maybe a little brighter uh, more saturated maybe well also keep in mind that your speculars that your specular reflectance might be flattening the colors out as well yeah, I'm gonna I'm gonna remove our spec on our colors because we're not really using reflectance or anything. It's kind of it's been a while, Chris. It's been so reflectance yeah. heavy. Reflectance, reflectance. And um, you know, it's kind of nice to, to do this. I'm I'm gonna uh, extrude this a little bit more while we're sitting here. Oh no. Oh no. Extrude it more and then yank them out. Yeah, I'll just I'll go too far and then that way it's always good. Okay. Might be a little bit much. Okay, go ahead to do your do your worst. So you can see this type of general uh, global illumination takes longer to render, and um, doesn't give you as instant results kind of thing. And you're saying, Chris, we can move one of these over left or right or something like that. One of the well, if you, if you look at the photo where it gives you context, I feel like the light lines up a little bit left of the elevators, and this is centered between the elevators. So one, it's almost like you take both lights and scoot them both to the left mm. or both to the right. So not perfectly centered. Okay. I, I don't know. It could be. Actually, I think this shadow is a little bit more harsh than that one. So let's move one up. And that might actually, Chris, give us a little bit more detail because that way there's, the lights aren't identically bright away. And so, that yeah, can... give us a little bit more detail. So that's looking pretty good. Um, as we move up in our – so let me do um, an actual render here to our picture viewer. I'm just going to dock this here so we can kind of see it back and forth. And I'm also going to dock our render settings and then just talk about our final kind of look. So I think we have a pretty good look going. It's a little bit hot here, a little bit bright. So I'm gonna take this um, this second soft box, which is, which one? This one, and just tone that down a little bit. Let's go back. And let's also turn up our render settings. We're on GI Draft now. Now remember, GI Low, we can't do that because we're essentially gonna go back to our QMC render settings because we only changed the render settings on that one, um, option that we can't really go back so let's actually look and see what this looks like we actually get some pretty good detail with qmc i prefer qmc it's a little bit more stable to me than some of these other renderers but you can see we lost our square crop we lost all this stuff so let's just go back to our gi draft and talk about some of the things we could do to turn up our render settings so right now we have one sampling subdivision we're going to do two instead blurry in a subdivision that's fine shadow let's move that up ambient occlusion we're not using. So let's just do another render at that. That's gonna be draft, but it's gonna be turned up just a little bit. Do I wanna stop rendering? Yeah, yes I do. A uh, quick side note, and as Crossfader pointed out in the chat, uh, you, you could use ambient occlusion on just one object if you wanted to by adding it to the shader and not to like the global scene. So if you just wanted it to fall in the letters and kind of fall out like a gradient on the edges, we could totally do that. That's uh, actually a good point. That's a, that is a good thing to keep in mind. Um, 
I'm going to go back to this and see how similar we are on this because see how bright it is. We're, I think it's getting... also incredibly saturated. Yeah. Like getting... those letters, that, those colors are like cranked blue and cranked red. Yeah. I think you're right. Should we crank it? Yeah. Crank right. it, kids. Bonk. This is like really bluey, but a little bit pale. You know what else, Chris? They also kind of pinch in. They, they don't, there's a lot of it that is red. Yeah, that's true. Right? So I think that has a lot to do with it as well. So let's just do a render just those. These are rendering relatively fast. 17 seconds isn't so bad. Um, and, and we'll get just a lot more detail on the wall too as far as colors and all this kind of stuff. Hey, look at that nice, and that, in fact, I think if you look at the photo reference, it'll be pretty dang close. Look at that nice, sharp blue we get. We get a little blue hanging out here, and if you go back to the reference, we definitely, uh, like when you look at this blue, look, there's definitely a blue glow up there. That's cool. It's a little more subtle, but we are getting the same effect. Yeah, that's great. This is good. All right, I'm feeling it. I'm feeling it. I feel like this uh, this color could be tweaked a little less saturated. But we're getting really close. Yeah, I mean, at this point, it's really like tweak, 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 tweak. I mean, I, I feel like we've hit the essence of. Uh... Yeah, I think we got it. So at this point, um, what I would do is just step up one more like sample radius for like a final quote final render, and make sure you're like feeling it on the uh, angle. Like I still am not happy with this camera. I think we can like zoom in even more, and get to more of like a 80 millimeter, which will be really flat looking. It's actually what made it look like um, a 3D render to me was like the angle of this uh, render and how like flat it was. So let's just do one more. We're gonna get the floor in there, which uh, we could always crop out, but ignore the floor. And we're gonna get oh, some nice and smooth looking really, with the cranked up settings. Yep, got some nice uh, shadows there. And if you want softer shadows, you just make your soft boxes wider. And this is actually, I'm, I'm just gonna do this just to show what this means. Yeah, I wanna see it. So see, you know, notice these really, you know, sharp shadows that we get, but they're soft going this way. They kind of fade off because they're long in one direction, but small in the other. So we have um, sharp uh, kind of against the against the wall, but then as it falls off, it, it doesn't stay. It's not like a sun would make this all one same shadow, right? So just compare that, and all we're gonna do is gonna be a little bit of movement, but let's do this. Turn off interactive render region, and I'm just gonna take our two soft boxes, and instead of 36 width, I'm just gonna make them like 100 width, just a little bit. Let's just go up a little bit and now let's compare the difference. Well, first of all, <laughs> we're gonna have a little bit more uh, brightness, which I didn't think about, but it will be a little bit brighter. But just look at the quality of the shadow now. So let's A, B this, A, B. Okay, so what do you see? You see less shadow overall, okay? So see how dark it is right there? Well, when you widen the softbox, it's gonna fill in more of that shadow, right? And you're also losing the definition on this really sharp little angle here. And in fact, this looks more natural to me than this, right? Yep. Assuming we darken it back down and get all that going, this is almost too soft at this point, and you're not bringing that in. So remember, the quality and the shape and the size of your soft boxes really, really matter. I mean, and this is why I built these things, because I'm like, I was used to seeing this in the real life, and I'm like, oh, crap, how can I make a big soft box? Nine times out of 10, you want a, a really big soft box. In fact, if we, sh if we shrink this way down, Let's go to uh, like six. We're gonna lose a lot of brightness too. Now this is gonna be a little bit, a little bit um, dark, like Chris said. It's, but we're also gonna get super sharp shadow right against the edge of the two. It's interesting. I, it, it, I've never really thought about lights that way. And like we are getting a lot of control over these shadows, like just by changing width. It's crazy. Not nuts. I mean that, and that's why that's why all this stuff meant so much to me when I started learning all these lighting techniques is because this is how if you walk into a restaurant with like little point lights everywhere you'll see all the shadows are really heavy and really thick and really like masculine you know and then you walk into something like a big department store or something like you like think of a gap or something it's all bright and it's white and it's no shadows there's everything's bright all the time so uh, you know well, I, I've always thought about the scale of lights but I haven't thought about like it being scaled up on one side and not the other and, and which is other. giving us these long but sharp yeah. shadows not interesting so I think we're good here as far as um, what, you know, I would, I would comp this a little bit. I would, um, 
maybe add like a little vignette or you know there's there's a little bit going on there's a little bit more texture on the wall than we have um, yeah there's yeah a little eggshell type texture <clears throat> somebody was saying put a bevel on there but in our reference there is not really a bevel maybe a tiny tiny little micro one yeah i think a little bevel would help and for someone's, sure. someone's asking about the red in the shadow underneath but that's we just pulled the saturation down a little bit on the floor oh, yeah. so, so go back into your uh thing here i set it to um 300 or 30 instead of 100 now what it's gonna I, make the overall scene a little bit more I red. think it will pinch a little bit too much red up um so you could also cheat this too and just put a little red light under there if you want to kick it without adding so much saturation to your entire scene I don't... so you can see this actually did okay yeah so let, check that out in isolation that doesn't feel overly warm once you go back and forth it's like okay it's definitely warmer but it, yeah it definitely added quite a lot of warmth but i think it actually pushed back because i was a little bit pale on this compared to theirs yeah but now yeah, it's actually true. That is, that is matching. Toward. Also, like my hallway might be when I made the hallway, I might have made it longer. If we pull that hallway in, then we'll still get the bounce up, but not so much forward. Right. So, like it, the shape of our hallway could be accounting for that. Right. And so, I mean, look at how subtle that is. Like no, no change really in render time. Um, it's just telling that floor to push up a little bit more on the thing. And by the way, we could also do the same thing with our illumination here. Oh yeah. So we could say make this five hundred percent. Uh, illumination and that's going to that's going to kick up all the colors on our on the sides to a degree i almost think you don't Look want okay <laughs> sorry I, I don't think you want to pull up the strength so much as the saturation mm, interesting because right now it's like that's brighter that feels like it's glowing it's like a little but if you thing. leave it at 100 and then crank saturation up to 500 might be a lot but if you do that like now it's like okay color the light that this is casting okay so. gonna, let me try that this is actually interesting because i I know I always remember that these are here, but it's always, almost always like too late where I'm like, oh, it's going to make too much of a drastic difference. Or, you're, you're already compensated in other areas. Yeah, I already cheated my way through it. So here's the difference between that is 100 everything. And then this is just more saturation, which, yeah, I think a little bit of both. actually. Yeah, it's not it's not brighter, but it's really putting the color in there. The other is adding a lot more strength overall, which does add to being more of that color as well. But yeah, even they at, are definitely at 500, distinct. Uh, this looks starting to look glowy. too. Yes. So let's go to 200. Um, and, you know, let's kick this up to a little 120. I don't know. But I think we're getting pretty close to where we could um, call this one. And uh, let me do a zoom in version here. I want to do a zoom out version but without the floor but let's do one last one and uh we'll call this one it so any anything we should have approached differently i think um that's pretty straightforward we yeah. just kind of uh, we went we went real world on this one like ambient occlusion is a fake yeah like it's not real and by cranking up the settings putting gi we are getting the only thing we didn't add but and i don't know that we should is that this material is slightly reflective mm -hmm. and you can see that in one of these other you can't see it here but it is still reflective, and you can see it in this one. You see you get these mm. little bright highlights. Mm -hmm. So I'm not saying that we should add that. But if we did add that reflectiveness, we wouldn't necessarily see it here, except it would maybe make it a little more pale. But in the reference, and uh, I don't think we should take the time to do it because we won't get too much payout. But we are actually getting some caustic oh, reflection yeah. off there. So the light is actually coming in caustically reflecting off there and adding that highlight. It's the only thing that we didn't add. And I honestly, at the end of the day, I feel like that's really the only... Like, everything is accounted for here. The colors, the shadow, the crispness, the fall off. Everything is accounted for. The red glow underneath. Everything's there except for that little caustic line. And that's that's what it is. That's the caustic line. Yeah. Everything else, it's complete recreation. That's fun. That was cool. Thank you uh, for the question. Thank you, Fabio. Uh, on Gar Otto. I hope I get that somewhat right. Design, thanks for making awesome stuff. And uh, thanks for watching another Ask GSG. I'll see you in another video. Bye, we'll everybody. See. Oh, bye bye. Sweet. That was fun, dude. Yeah, okay, chat. We're still here. That was just for the.